In this video, we'll be practicing the selector portion of the call to the jQuery method. I've opened up exercise underscore four underscore one in my editor. And you can also open this page in the web browser. You'll see that it consists of various elements, including some heading tags, some paragraph tags with a particular class applied, a table, some hypertext links, and an unordered list. So in order to practice the selectors, what we'll do is we will select these various elements within this web page. and We'll use a method that invokes CSS. And that CSS will simply highlight the element that we've uh, queried with the jQuery method and uh, place a yellow background behind it. So if you look at the script block, we've already made a call to the ready function on the document object. And below that, you'll see a series of comments. So each comment indicates the selector that we'd like to use and then invoke the CSS to highlight whatever we've selected with yellow. So if you place your cursor underneath that first comment, the idea here is to set the selector for all paragraphs. So we begin by invoking our jQuery method with the dollar sign. And the selector that we need here is all paragraphs. Therefore, inside of the quotes, we simply add p for the p tag. That's what we're looking for. Next, we'll invoke the CSS method. It's going to allow us to select a CSS property and then set a value for that property. So it'll be the same one for each of these. It'll be the background color property. And we'll use a background color of yellow for this. You can save the file and test it in the browser, and you should see all instances of these p tags that you find throughout this document should now be highlighted with a background color of yellow, with the end result looking like this in the web browser. So you can see the tags that haven't been uh, highlighted in yellow include the table tags, the TRs, the TDs, the THs, and the unordered list down here. Let's comment that bit of jQuery and move on to the next practice set, which is the selector for only the second paragraph. So here again, we invoke our jQuery method with the dollar sign. Now we need the selector for only the second paragraph. So we're still going to place the selector within quotes, and we're still looking for a p tag. However, we're going to use the syntax that allows us to get a particular child within the document. And we do this by passing that child's index number. And notice, for those comfortable with uh, writing JavaScript, we don't use zero-based counting here. So typically in JavaScript, when we're grabbing a, an array, we'll get the second item by getting the array index number one, because we start counting with zero for the first instance, and one for the second, and two for the third, and so forth. But jQuery will just use the number that you're looking for. So we're looking for the second paragraph tag here, so we pass in a value of 2. And then beyond that, we invoke the same CSS method with the same CSS property of background color and the same value of yellow. You should be able to save this now and test it in the browser. Be sure you've commented out that first bit of jQuery, though, so that you're not highlighting all paragraphs in yellow. The end result should look like this, where your paragraph that reads, this is paragraph 2, is now highlighted in yellow. We'll comment that bit of jQuery and move on to our next selector. This is the paragraph with a class of special. So if you scroll down a bit, you'll see that is the third paragraph. But we won't access it because it's the third paragraph, because that might change over time when we add an additional paragraph above it. So what we will do is access it by that class name, which is special. So underneath the comment, go ahead and call your jQuery method, quoting the selector, which again is the p tag. But like CSS, we're going to acquire the class with the dot. Had this been an ID selector, we'd acquire it with the pound symbol. And that class is called special. Now we can just copy the call to the CSS function and go ahead and paste it there. And you should be able to save and test this file as well. With the end result showing the paragraph whose class is special highlighted in yellow. 
Let's take a look at the next practice exercise. This is setting the selector for the second table row. So think about that and see if you can't figure out how we do that. It'll be very similar to the method used to grab the second paragraph tag. So we're going to use the same CSS syntax. We're just looking for a different tag now. So rather than look for the P tag, we're looking for the TR tag, but we're still looking for the second one. So your code should look like that. And you can save and test this file after you've placed that code in. But be sure to go back to the previous bit of jQuery and comment it out before your test. The finished result in the browser should look like this with the even numbered paragraph, the second table row in the table that says select all even paragraphs is currently highlighted in yellow. Let's comment that bit of jQuery. The next exercise, setting the selector for all hypertext links, should be fairly easy at this point for you. So let's move on to the one where we select uh, the list item with the title attribute of most popular. So let's go back down and review that unordered list. Here's our unordered list with several LIs nested inside of it, but only one LI has a title attribute, and that title attribute is set to most popular. So let's take a look at how we would write this selector. First, we'll call our jQuery method. And again, we're going to highlight in yellow, so I'll just copy and paste that code right there. And of course, we're missing the selector portion, so let's figure out how we would do that. So we quote that, and we're looking for an element that has a title attribute of most popular. Now, we are looking for an li tag here, but it is the only tag with a title attribute. So we can put a filter within square brackets indicating that it is the title attribute that has to match most popular. And you notice I single quote here because I'm nesting these quotes within the double quotes that have to surround the jQuery selector. So if your code matches mine, you should be able to save and test this. And if you preview that in the browser, it is the third LI that should be highlighted in yellow, the one who has a title attribute that says most popular. We'll use that same method to set the selector for the hypertext link on the page that links to a PDF. So if you scroll down a bit, you'll see several hypertext links, many of which point to websites including jQuery's, jQuery at Wikipedia, W3 Schools jQuery page, and finally the last hypertext link, which links not to a web page but to a PDF file. So let's get our cursor underneath the comment and call our jQuery method. Still highlighting in yellow by calling the CSS method. And now let's put our attention on the selector portion. So as I mentioned, we're going to use the same technique as we did in the previous example, which was this square bracket filter that points to a particular attribute. In this case, the attribute is the href attribute. We're going to use another bit of syntax, here, which is the dollar sign, but this is not to invoke the jQuery method. We're using this to indicate that the attribute href should end with the following characters. And here again, I'm going to use single quotes because I'm nesting. And in order to get that links to a PDF, the end of that hypertext reference attribute would be PDF. As you can see, the others all end with, well, this one doesn't end with anything because we don't have a path. We're going to the home page, but that would be HTML, as would this one. This one is linking to a, a .asp page, and here we're seeing that the href attribute ends with, denoted by our second dollar sign, .pdf. So your code should match the line that we've just typed, and you should be able to save and test now. The end result in the browser would show the last hypertext link, which is the link to the PDF. So this exercise was intended to give you a little bit of practice. We've really just scratched the surface. There's much more to learn about selectors, but this gives you the idea of how jQuery works. And of course, all of the selectors are easily found in any of the references that are linked to here, as well as the many jQuery books available.